Good morning, family, and welcome to Morning Heart Devotion with Dr. Chong Shik Yong, brought to you by our Heavenly Parents Holy Community. Let's begin by greeting our Heavenly Parent and True Parents. Chanjian Champamonimke Kyongbe Baru. Now for our family pledge, Kajong Meng Se. Il Chanyo Guk Juin. 우리 가정은 참 사랑을 중심하고 본향 땅을 찾아 본연의 창조의 상인 지상 천국과 천상 천국을 장건할 것을 맹세하나이다. 이 천여국 주인 우리 가정은 참 사랑을 중심하고 하늘 부모님과 참 부모님을 모시어 천주의 대표적 가정이 되며 중심적 가정이 되어 가정에서는 효자, 국가에서는 중심, 세계에서는 성인, 천주에서는 성자의 가정의 도리를 완성할 것을 맹세하나이다. 3. 천혜의급 주인, 우리 가정은 참사랑을 중심하고 4대 심정권과 3대 왕권과 황족권을 완성할 것을 맹세하나이다. 4. 전혜어 급주인 우리 가정은 참사랑을 중심하고 하늘 부모님의 창조의 상인 천주대 가족을 형성하여 자유와 평화와 통일과 행복의 세계를 완성할 것을 맹세하나이다. 오 전혜어 급주인 우리 가정은 참사랑을 중심하고 매일 주체적 천상세계와 대상적 지상 세계의 통일을 향해 전진적 발전을 촉진화할 것을 맹세하나이다. 6. 전해어급 주인 우리 가정은 참사랑을 중심하고 하늘 부모님과 참 부모님의 대신 가정으로서 천운을 움직이는 가정이 되어 하늘의 축복을 주변에 연결시키는 가정을 완성할 것을 맹세하나이다. 7. 천여급 주인 우리 가정은 참사랑을 중심하고 본연의 혈통과 연결된 위하는 생활을 통하여 심정문화 세계를 완성할 것을 맹세하나이다. 8. 천여급 주인 우리 가정은 참사랑을 중심하고 천혜어극 시대를 맞이하여 절대 신앙, 절대 사랑, 절대 복종으로 신인의 일체 이상을 이루어 지상 천국과 천상 천국의 해방권과 석방권을 완성할 것을 맹세하나이다. Hmm. To open us up with prayer this morning, I'd like to invite up uh, Mrs. Teiko Corona. Take us on if you could pray for us. Thank you. Having heavenly parents and the true parents, thank you so much this morning. Having heavenly parents, we uh, every morning really appreciate uh, this morning devotion. Uh, now uh, we uh, understand about uh, uh, that progress uh, and uh, now very important time uh, with uh, through uh, parents, especially through mother, is a uh, uh, determination and uh, uh, to make a goal. Having I mean, having parents uh, a few days ago uh, through. Uh, Mother's uh, birthday was so uh, special, and uh, we really appreciate and uh, so attend the uh, webinar. Having heavenly parents and uh, our continental reader, Dr. Uh, uh, Young, attended and uh, his devotion is uh, really. Uh, 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 special and precious uh, 
for America and、uh, for all of the world. Our、uh, l parents, we really、uh, think about、uh, morning devotion is、uh, so precious and、uh, especially to connect、uh, heavenly parents and the true parents. Every heavenly parent,、uh, we really appreciate this morning and、uh, our brother and sister s、uh, together to、uh, focus to receive your word and、uh, your heart through Dr. Young. I、uh, uh, really appreciate this moment.、Uh, please with, what, with us and guide us. I report t e c o Corona as p r e s e n t e r s family. Aju. Aju. Thank you so much, t e c o san, for your really beautiful prayer. Kamsamida. Thank you so much, t e c o san. And now, brothers and sisters, we go into our breakouts and share appreciations with one another, and we'll see you back soon.
Okay, good morning. Uh, welcome back, the family. I uh, hope you enjoyed your breakout. Um, I had a wow, a very deep, uh, different level of discussion in my breakout, and uh, I'm wondering what will be said of it. But let me invite up first Mrs. Our Aunt Anne Marie Mylar. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. When I saw Mirhana told him, you are not going to call me again. <laughs> On the other hand, I knew exactly what he was going to do. Um, I shared with him how that I, I started by saying, I have absolutely no whom to complain about my life, period. I cannot complain at all. And one of the reasons that I remembered why I cannot complain is because this morning I was in front of my altar as I do every day. And sometime I, before I approach the altar, I try to prepare my psyche, my, my spirit. So I close my eyes. And when I close my eyes this morning, what I want actually is to be able to See, I was in Hawaii for eight years, in Kona, Hawaii. Because of that, I witnessed two parents many times. Two parents were there. They came often. This is a privilege that very few members have had. And I closed my eyes and I remember the sound that two parents made when they walk towards the room at five o'clock in the morning to meet each one of us. And when I close my eyes, I can hear to father's footstep and he shuffled his feet. He, he's not picking up his feet very well. He's shuffling, he's getting old. I noticed to, parent, to father getting old for eight years and shuffling his feet. And then I can hear his voice. He's talking to true mother or saying something. It is his voice, not anybody else's voice. And I, I cannot hear what he says, I just hear the sound. And when I close my eyes in front of the altar and I hear the sound of true father's voice and, and he's walking to father and to mother, holding hand, walking towards us. It's an experience that very few brothers and sisters have had throughout the whole world. Some brothers and sisters never met the true parents. I met the true parents many times. And this is to me, uh, I was thinking about this. It is, I, can, I have no hope to complain about my life whatsoever. Mm. And I, instead I have to, I want to be able to give all this. Wow, beautiful. You are such a really unforgettable experience with the true parents. Wow, beautiful. Thank you, Gamsamida. Thank you, Jean Marie. Honestly, listening to you was like meditation. Mm -hmm. Just kind of finding peace in every moment uh, with true parents. Gosh, yeah. Not only did you have that experience, but you were able to really appreciate it and absorb it fully. So we thank you for sharing that. And to share next, let me invite up Mrs. Misayo Bien. <clears throat> Good morning, Dr. Yon. <laughs> yeah, um, I didn't finish my reflection in the breakout uh, room, but really um, I had a beautiful time yesterday in our church. Really, usually I go out every Sunday to uh, minister outreach, but uh, this yesterday was a special day. Uh, Foundation Day and True Parent Birthday, please, uh, I really wanted to attend there. And then really, the, um, our pastor, Pastor Christian, just such a, gave us such a beautiful prayer. And then I met our brothers and sisters, really inspired me. And then really, I think in my back of many kind of uh, struggle, many things that it solved the meeting our brothers and sisters, God was working in each one of them. I really felt really happy. 
And when I came back home and I read mother's um, the, uh, that um, message from that uh, to her birthday, really gave me such a kind of a confidence. She kind of confident to us that you have to have confidence and then to unite with true mother. Everything kind of stomachically, kind of everything go, go uh, come follow. Wow, well, you know, even though I had a, the bearing so many difficulties, this and that, really kind of again uh, me kind of comfort and the confidence gave me that really great, great, um, the kind of uh, feelings and really grateful for true mother. And then this morning, the devotion. Give us a lot of inspiration. Mm. Thank you so much. Wow, thank you so much, Bisayo PN. I think uh, somehow you are really very much cultivating your heart so much. That's why when you go to Christian church, when you come to our church, whenever I see people, you can feel like a member's a warming heart. But if you don't have that kind of heart and you know, cannot relate to the people. I think uh, not just only people inspire you, I think you really recently somehow cultivating your heart and very much relate to God and our true parents. Thank you so much for your really beautiful sharing. Thank you so much, Misaya-san, and um, you're yeah, your sharing in your heart is really beautiful and pure. No question about that. And uh, let's now, brothers and sisters, welcome up Dr. Young for our morning heart devotion. Good morning, good morning, my dear brothers and sisters, clergy and members of our peace. 안녕하십니까. Uh, today I'd like to talk about Asia again from True Mother's Anthology, Book 1. Today, True Mother going to talk about the, some nation. Let's invite our heavenly honey. Asia, <clears throat> perhaps because Nepal is situated at the highest altitude of any region on this planet, the power of the good spirits in the spirit world is quite dominant here. I believe that its situation helps Nepal to receive help faster than any other region through the direct dominion of the spirit world. <clears throat> I feel that the meeting was such a great success because your heart is at a place where you can be connected more quickly, not only to God, but also to true parents. Nepal in various ways is located where it can stand close to heaven's heart. Moreover, the people of Nepal by nature have the ability to embrace everything in their surroundings, including their heaven-blessed natural environment. Therefore, if you continue to move forward centering on the word, you may become the central nation and central figures. You should study the word every day, and from that, find out what you need to do. Thank you. And until now, true parents do not know how much investment they have put in seeing Nepal as a country that can become one Chanilgu nation. While serving as a chairman of the Asia continent, uh, Asia continent, I pour out all my heart and soul along with the leaders and members numerous of political leaders and more than half of the members of the National Assembly have been educated on the uh, divine principle. In addition, the communist leaders of Nepal were also invited to teach the divine principle. Based on that foundation, we hosted the National Convention and Asian Summit with the true parents very, very successfully. That's why mother was so happy when she really came to Nepal to joining this Asian summit. That's why mother really delivered beautiful message to our dear brothers and sisters. Continue. 
India is the nation where God gave birth to several religions. What this means is that there are people here who were prepared by God. We need to find those people and save them. The message given to the Universal Peace Federation speaking tour to return to the original fatherland and hometown will be more than valuable in reaping those fruits. For it is a message that anyone can accept. In the Chanukuk era, we need to harvest and dedicate everything to God as quickly as possible. There is no time. We do not have much time for harvesting. True Father's work must be fulfilled at all costs. Geographically, India is located at a place of great importance in maintaining peace in Asia. After touring across island nations around the world, I saw that there is not one nation that is not swayed by China. This means that China exerts a strong influence on the world. It would be nice if China worked together with true parents centering on God's will, but at present, it stands in the position of Cain and is thinking only of its own interests as it increases its influence. The nation that can keep China in check is India. This Asian nation needs to stand on the side of the providence. Now that the time has come for us to achieve actual results, it will not do for us to just deliver the word and let it drift away as we did in the past. You need to take charge of everyone who comes to our meetings. You need to set an example through your own actions so that your heart can speak to their heart. I hope that you will thus link them to you with such a strong connection that they will not be able to sit still because they will miss you so much. Yes. The following are the words of the blessing from True Mother to Nepal at the victory celebration of the rally for the hopeful march forward of the Heavenly Asia in 2018. At the time, me and my whole Asian family united and had a successful rally in the presence of the current prime minister of the government and then also the ministers of the uh, uh, government. I think most of the political leaders joined together to participate this Asian summit. Wow, at the time, really, our true mother, you know, I do not know, I do not know how to express. She was so happy. Such a high level delegation, not just only from Nepal, from everywhere. It was a really unforgettable, one of the beautiful, the summit in Nepal. So at the time, Mada delivered a very beautiful speech. Let's uh, uh, study about that. Victory celebration for the rally for the hopeful march forward of Heavenly Asia, True Mother's Speech, December 3rd, 2018, Hyatt Regency Hotel, Kathmandu, Nepal. When I think of Nepal, I wonder how the dream of the creator, God, would have taken shape. The dent... Demoiselle cranes of the Mongolian plains risked their lives migrating over the Himalayas toward the plains of India to prepare for winter. Although nobody taught them this, those cranes have always acted this way to preserve and reproduce. Then I pondered about how the creators, God's original, planet Earth, would have looked if human beings had not fallen. Even in the history of this country, it has undergone torment from wars and conflicts. All of human history is like that. As of yesterday, I hope that Nepal can show in front of all people the original ideal God, our creator, envisioned at the time of creation and what a nation of blessed people and families is like. I pray that there will be unity among the Nepalese citizens, government and civil society, and a new heavenly Nepal will stand proudly in the eyes of the world and humanity as it attends our heavenly parent. Heaven blessed Nepal with beautiful nature. Wouldn't you like to make Nepal the most beautiful and livable country in the world 
by having more and more blessed families nurturing and taking care of its resources? You who currently receive good fortune and blessings have to change in order to achieve that. For things to be different, you must fulfill your responsibilities as blessed families. You have to show others how to live a life of practicing true love, to be the one who lives for the sake of others. Will you do this? There is another gorgeous place in the world, the European Alps. I would like Nepal to make a heavenly Himalayas, which is more healthful and more beautiful than Europe's Alps. I hope the Nepalese Family Federation members will be at the forefront, living truly, loving lives as originally desired by God, the creator. Yes, thank you, Heavenly Honey. Living on Divine Principle, the life of Four Portion Foundation, please read. When the origin, the subject partner and object partner projected from the origin and their union all fulfill the three object purpose, the four position foundation is established. Through Father's work. Love that connects three generations. Then what should we do to receive God's love? You should perfect your individuality, family, and the four position foundation, which as we explain in the Unification Church, multiplies goodness. In other words, you should form, you should attend God as your parent on the earth, become children loved by God, and form a true couple in conformity with the heavenly principles and laws centering on God. Once you create a family that can be connected to the third generation through a son bond between you and your spouse within God's love, God will aid you for eternity. Incredible. You know what the completion of a four portion foundation means? The completion of the three generations to the stage of grandchildren. So when the three generations are completed in this way, God stays in the family and cooperates forever. If it is completed through the number three, which are three generations, Satan can no longer take advantage of it. Therefore, our homework is how to receive the blessing and uh, complete the three generations. What is always a prob problematic is the second, the number two. Formation stage, okay, but you know, Adam and Eve fell at the gross stage. Our first generation absolutely followed through parents, but you know, always the problem is a number two, challenging number two. That's why if we really overcome our second generation very well, wow, then automatically we can complete number three, which is a completion stage. The completion of grandchildren is the completion of the my family, the completion of God's ideal, and uh, the eternal resting place of God. The completion of the grandchildren refers to the stage in which they receive the blessing. There is a no fall and Satan after formation, growth, and completion. So once completed, the completed model last so forever. That's why yesterday I talked about, you know, to accomplish four portion foundation is a very, very difficult. Father said, it is one of the most difficult thing. However, no matter what, we need to challenge it. We need to overcome. We need to really accomplish four position foundation. Father said, once completed, the completed model lasts forever. So all of you already received the blessing of the first generation, right? Now you're challenging how to raise up your second generation for them to keep in purity and receiving the blessing, right? And then not only that, and then how can you have the grandchildren centering on three generation? That is our job. However, some family cases are really struggling and then how to deal with, dealing with each one of their children. 
they go their own direction. Some of them already married from outside of, you know, uh, children. However, my brothers and sisters, we cannot give up, right? Our first generation faith, okay, still we are loving true parents and absolutely obey to true parents. Even though one of your child or two of your child marry outside of you know, people, but still we need to encourage them to come back and then for them to receive blessing. They need to fix the problem one by one. At least they come back and they're learning divine principle and receive blessing. Already we are one of the, uh, the one of the solution fixing the problems. Therefore, my brothers and sisters, even though they can't keep the purity, they already married, do not disappoint. You know, parental love is no matter what. Of course, you are very much painful. But God's love is continuous love, lasting love, no matter what. That's why even our true parents of family, you know, Hyojinim family, he, how he solved the Hyojinim family. And when Hung Jinim passed away early, then how he created four position foundation centering on the Hung Jinim and Hun Sung Nim and then and get the adopted child from other children. And then, you know, Sun Jinim's family, all true parents are arranging now, one by one. You know? So, that's why some family cases may be lucky and all, all, all your children receive the blessing. Some of them is, you know, could not do that. But we need to encourage each other. Even though your family is okay, but you need to treat other family as your own family. Cooperate together. We are one family under God. We are same brothers and sisters. We are same children of God. Cooperate each other. Your problem is my problem. If we really create that kind of environment within our church, within our foundation of the, our unification movement, I am telling you, our second generation will all, everybody will come back. In the end, everybody need to come back to God anyway. But one thing, some of the family is completely give up. They are no more my child. I really abandon them. That is a problem. That's why I think, uh, you know, even though many family cut kind of the situation, continuously pray and working hard. And then gradually, gradually, let them come back to really uh, connect to the, our heavenly parents and true parents. You know, we are now in that kind of the process and transition time period, I am telling you again and again. So, no matter what, we need to complete for Fortune Foundation, right? So the through grandchildren can complete my four position foundation. It is true, you know. So some kids problem, and then bring back again, educate and receive the blessing. Even previous family category to join the first generation or previous married couple. Anyway, blessing is a blessing. This incredible God's grace. Better than giving up. This is our destiny, my brothers and sisters. Why my children like that? Why my destiny like that? You continuously complain this and that. It does not help you anything. We, of course, we need to repent. We could not raise my children. However, at the same time, your lasting love without changing for your children, no matter what, continuously love them. Do you agree with me? Okay, next content. Love that represents God's love. The love of the mother or father toward their child represents God's love. Parents' love is the manifestation of God's love. Do you understand? The child's love to his parents is tantamount to that of loving God. Loving one's parents, loving one's mother and father represents the act of loving God. Furthermore, Eve's act of loving Adam or a woman's act of loving a man represents the act of loving her children and God. A man's act of loving a woman is also the same as loving God. 
This is really beautiful content. The love of parents toward their children represents God's love. The child's love to his parents represents God's love. A sibling's love toward their siblings represents God's love. Also, the love of a couple has for each other represents God's love. Loving my neighbor or loving the nation or loving humankind also represents the act of loving God. Therefore, whoever I love, whatever nature and item of all things I love, I love while thinking that it represents God's love. Do not think that I love them because they are my physical parents. I love them because they are my children. I love them because they belong to me and they are, they are my assets. Loving them in my own name means it becomes a love that has nothing to do with God. Therefore, when I love in all things, think that you are loving them on behalf of God. When you deal with them with love, of, with love on behalf of God in this way, the four portion foundation can be completed. Beautiful, isn't it? Oh, you know, you know, even children express their love toward their parents. This also represents God's love. That's why whatever I do, not just only humanistic love, my own love, I am the one who really represents God's love. Our Father's guidance is really amazing. Who guided who guide this way in such details? Father is really, really, he's the champion of really love. He knows how to describe, he knows how he practice. Okay, next content. The four position foundation is the point of settlement for ideal love. I am the one who took part in my father and mother's love. When a couple makes love horizontally, physically, they must vertically carry on God's love. That is God's love, and at the same time, children's love. Consequently, God will reside within your love. The mother will reside within your love. The father will reside within your love. And you will also reside within your father's love. When these four types of love are combined, the first cry of a baby signals the start of an ideal world. How great is that? Thank you. Continue. That is why everybody wants children. Why? It is because they can be part of the realm of love, which God envisions as his ideal. By having children, you can be part of God's ideal realm. That is the completion of the four position foundation. This is a very important. I do not know how much do you understand, you know? Why is a true love so precious? It is because of participation is an attribute of true love. The place where a husband and wife will share horizontally, which is a sexual love between the couple, is the place where God participates. God is really coming down. And then the husband and wife will physically and spiritually participate also together. And the man's sperm and woman's egg come together and meet and creating embryo, which is a you know, fetus. That's why there is a four kinds of love, God's love, husband's love, wife's love, and also you know, baby seed also participating based upon opposition foundation. Therefore, the place where a husband and wife love each other is where the four great loves participate together. This is where the love of four position foundation begins, my brothers and sisters. The completion of the four position foundation is the place where children are born and completed. We can, we can understand, we can describe everything centering on four position foundation. So today's youth ministry, God are good and evil from the viewpoint of the purpose. 
So let's invite again our heavenly honey to read. Next, uh, good and evil from the viewpoint of the purpose. Next, let's have time to study together about good and evil. Good and evil from the viewpoint of the purpose. When the archangel and Eve had an illicit relationship, their sense of purpose in life was vague. Their fleshy desires became their motivation and were only satisfied with the flesh-centered reality. They did not have any solid sense of purpose in life. In order to have a clear purpose in life, one must value the relationship with God, the relationship with parents, the relationship with the teacher, and the relationship with Abel that one has grown up with to this day. This is because the purpose of life and faith becomes clear when we live through the subject partner. Yes. If you have a clear purpose and vision centered on God's will, you will not be dominated by the surrounding environment or physical sexual temptations. If your goals and vision centering on God's will are vague, not clear, you easily bear fruit from the evil side. People who have a clear purpose of life have no time to be influenced by their surrounding environment. In order for your purpose in life to become clearer, you must value your vertical relationship with God and your parents and your Abel. Because Adam and Eve's relationship with God was unclear, unclear, they neglected God's commandment not to eat the fruit of the tree of knowledge of good and evil. This is the point, my brothers and sisters. This is the point. That's why our purpose is not clear. Our vision is not clear. Our goal is not clear. And then easily become horizontal. When you become horizontal, when you lose your vertical alignment, Satan immediately come to me and become humanistic, become self-centered and losing the vertical, you know, the connection. Anytime you are a dangerous guy, Satan can invade you. What is the reason Adam and Eve for? They, Adam and Eve, you know, did not have a clear vertical alignment. And they're not clear about the purpose of their life. And God gave them very serious commandment to not eat. If you eat, certainly, surely will die. Ten much serious, you know, God's commandment. But they forget. When they forget, not so serious, and become horizontal. Once you lose vertical alignment, you no more power. Then Satan invade you anytime. We already have experience, right? Okay, next content. Okay, and then, and then God warned Adam and Eve that if they ate the fruit, they will surely die. Just now I mentioned that. But since they did not think seriously, they fell into the into the archangel temptation. Therefore, if your purpose is unclear and your relationship is unclear, you will lose your sense of direction. Flow toward the evil side and then fall. If I do not have the definite, definite goal and vision, Satan will always enter me and play the role of the ownership. Okay, next content. When we say we want to live a happy life, the purpose and motive of who I want to live happily for must be clear. But if you want to be happy for yourself, you are a person who has no purpose in life because you can never be happy if you live for yourself. This is the principle of the universe. Happiness is a blessing that comes only when you live for the sake of others. The love that the archangel and Eve exchanged was centered on the flesh and was dominated by the environment. So their love had no purpose of living for someone and bringing joy to someone. 
If we center on physical desire and fall into fleshy impulses, our original nature loses freedom and our purpose becomes vague. But the person who dominates freedom has a thorough sense of purpose. Despite suffering in reality, they overcome hardships because of the vision and purpose of their life. Even if the given environment of reality is good, I come to think about whether it is good or bad centered on the purpose and relationship I establish. Even if it is good, it is good and happy because it is in line with the good purpose I have set up. A person whose purpose, visions, and goals for life are set by the center do not live by the circumstances of the environment of reality. Reality always transcends the environment. From this point of view, it can be said that the love between the archangel and Eve had no purpose in life. Yes. It is easy to be fooled around by the environment if you are not clear about the purpose of what you eat for uh, when you eat. And what you live for when you live. And what you uh, you know, earn for while earning money. Then I will live as the wind blows, as the year passes, and I lose the freedom of my original nature. That's why the Bible says that people without vision will perish. A vision that has nothing to do with God, with God's will, eventually disappear. This is why the Bible says that anyone who lives without God's vision will eventually perish. I already mentioned to my brothers and sisters. You know, whenever I educate my three children and uh, three children's uh, spouse, I am telling them they are doing very well, have a good job, and uh, going to get good salary and a stable job, and, and now already have the grandchildren. Sometimes I worry. They are really focused on their own job. It's okay, but I am telling them, whatever you focus on, okay, but what kind of vision do you have? Make money while your business is successful. And, you know, then I tell them, what kind of a vision do you have? Of course, they have a vision, but your vision do not connect to God's vision. Someday, eventually, surely disappear. Your vision, nothing did, nothing, nothing to do with God. That's why the Bible said, without God's vision, we'll eventually perish. So far, last 6,000 years, people and come. And why perish? What's the reason? Even though they are surviving, what to eat, what to wear, what to drink, they are very much focused on, sec on sec focus on secular world. How many of them really, they are still alive? That's why whatever my brother said, whatever I do, your teaching job or your business job or your you know, professor job or you know, any job is okay. Whatever you do, you need to reflect. I need to reflect on that. My vision really connect to God's vision or not? If there is no connection with God's vision, eventually disappear, eventually perish. Not just only individual, not just only family level. Why so many nations declining and declining and declining? Cannot see hope because any nation. Their vision and goal, nothing, nothing dealing with God's vision and goal. That's why we will perish. How America really become the center of the world? Very clear. The entire hope and vision of the America connect to God's vision, relate to God's vision. Then America surely prosperous, my brothers and sisters. Huh? Even though you are in our movement, but whatever, whatever you focus on something, 
nothing dealing with God's vision and God's hope and God's wish. Bible said, where the, where there is no God's vision, we eventually perish. You will perish, even though make your money so much money. But this money, you earning that money without connecting God's vision and God's wish, does not make any sense. Just when you focus on what to eat, what to uh, what to drink, okay, what to wear, centering on my own family, this kind of lifestyle is eventually perish and disappear. My brothers and sisters, that's why we are vision and vision. That's fine, but what kind of vision do you have? Even though you have a vision, your vision really connect to God or not? Your vision is a very clear centering on God's vision, centering on God's will. Whatever you do, always prosperous. Very much hopeful. Because God is there, my brothers and sisters. God is there. Huh? Our American movement, unification movement, our family, the vision, our nation vision. That's why America, our nation, America, really have God's vision or not? Not America herself, her own vision. Entire American goal, national goal, I'm not talking about our church, outside America, the government goal, how much it connect to God's vision and wish? No connection? No matter how much you work hard, surely eventually disappear and perish. Wow. Very important, my brothers and sisters. Okay, next content. Most people who are dominated by their environment, especially those who make mistakes in illicit love, are not clear about their purpose in life. That is why you get confused and dominated by your environment. No matter what kind of suffering you face, you must distinguish between good and evil, centering on your sense of purpose. Even if we face difficulties or suffer, we need to check our goals and purpose as to why it has to be like this. I need to check on and find the reason I have to be persecuted like this, why I have to be so misunderstood, and why I have to be disrespected. In reality, even if I suffer, God rescues me when I have a definite vision, clear set of values, and hope. Yeah, that's why where, 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 you know, whenever you have a God's vision and hope and God's goal, you never perish. Most of the people who fall in love with an affair due to the fall are wandering. And there are many people who do not have a clear goal in life. And the relationship between God and parents and Abel is not so good. That's why relationship is very important. Your relationship with God, your relationship with your parents, your relationship with your, with your Abel is very important. These three kinds of relationship not so good. Definitely, you will connect to chapter two problem. You will connect to the secular world. Easy to become horizontal, easy to become humanistic, easy to become self-centered, easy to become a, a, a very arrogant, my brother says. Relationship, relationship with God and centering on clear purpose. Secondly, what? Relationship with God, with your parents, with your able. This is a lifeline, my brother senses. Your relationship is re really, re your relationship is God is very good. And then automatically your relationship is good with your parents. And also automatically your relationship is good with, is good with your able. Then everything can be protected. But not so relationship, relationship not so strong. And then immediately Satan invade you. When Adam and Eve, their relationship not clear with God, not strong enough. And then, you know, Archangel immediately attack them. And then other men, if they are lost, their original purpose, their vision, their goal is not clear. Secondly, their relationship with God is not clear. Very, very dangerous. Next. 
Even when Jesus died on the cross, his heart was unchanging because he had a clear objective and purpose as to why he had to be crucified. Even looking at the results of God's resurrection of Jesus, we can see that Jesus' purpose was unchanging. When a person faces a crisis, they lose their will and purpose. There is a proverb that says, even if you are bitten by a tiger, as long as you come to your senses, you will live. This means that even if you are bitten by a tiger, you will live as long as you do not lose your purpose. However, when a person is bitten by a tiger, if they lose their mind before being eaten by the tiger, they also miss the chance to live. Yes. Do you know why I respect Jesus so much? He's my father. I, to be frank with you, I really love him. He's my Messiah. Jesus did not die on the cross in vain, but he had a conviction of the spiritual salvation of all humankind by becoming a sacrifice. If Jesus had any regrets or dissatisfaction while dying on the cross, that means he did not have a clear objective for dying on the cross. Even while dying, he did not lose that objective. That's why even though he died, actually, he did not, he did not die. Because he had an unchanging objective. Jesus who died was resurrected and then went to the convey God's will. My brothers and sisters, imagine how strong and clear the will of Jesus must have been when he rose from the dead and raised up and gathered and educated the scattered disciples again. That's why Jesus is still alive and working. You know, his will about, about his God's will is really, really clear, unchanging. After he died, how much is his, his will is so strong and he resurrect and come back again. And then, you know, you know call each one of the, his disciples and gather together and educate them. Can you imagine? Even though he died on the cross, even though after he died, his will is unchanging. His goal is unchanging. His purpose is unchanging. His vision is unchanging. That's why even though physically died, actually he didn't die. Still alive, still working. I really want to be like Jesus. I really envy Jesus. Even after death, I want to become a person who can walk on the earth just like when I was alive, walking for the will of God more than when I was in an in earthly world. Wow. Jesus is not dying. He is still alive. Can you imagine after he died and he come back again, he resurrected? How God make him resurrected? Wow, he does not care, you know, living on the earth or die. His mindset, his purpose, his goal, you know, his vision, unchanging. How can I carry on that kind of Jesus spirit? Does that matter? Or still alive or die? Does that matter? If we carry on that kind of the, you know, strong spirit of the purpose and goal and vision, how can Satan invade us? You look at father. Father was a lighter until the moment of death. How much he worked so hard. You know, demon him pass away. And then he come back again, walking, centering on Chongpyeong. Wow. 
you and me, as a blessed family, when we die someday, we should be like a Jesus. We should be like a true father. We should be like a demon. Our vision that much clear. And have a heart. Have a heart. Jesus have a heart. No matter what, I need to fulfill God's vision. That's why we can say that even though you physically die, actually you are not yet die. You are still working very, very hard. That's why we have that kind of vision. We have that kind of goal, my brothers and sisters. Okay, final slide. The righteous are the ones who overcome death and suffering because of the will and purpose they have set up. Pain is like the practice of death. All my life of eating, sleeping, waking up, and ritualism must be consistent, centering on the will and goals I set for myself. If you have a clear goal and will toward the will, you will receive guidance from the spirit world, even in your dreams. Father, as long as I have the Father's body, I cannot help but sleep. Although I sleep, I cannot change the goal and purpose of my will. If we pray like this, God will not be able to forget such children. Yes. What kind of vision and goal do you live with? If I do not have a vision and goal and a purpose of life, I flow away to the evil side anytime. On the contrary, if I, my vision and sense of a purpose on God's will is clear, I will flow to the good side. It is a fact that whether I become a person of goodness or a person of evil is decided, depend on my given goal and vision. Wow. Today, we learn very important thing you know, from God's word. Thank you so much, Dr. Young. I think we all really... But it's so comfort to know we're so clear that we have a vision. And I think as Americans, we feel responsible to provide that vision for our leadership so we can move forward in America, build God's kingdom. So with that, brothers and sisters, let's go into our breakout now and share our reflections on today's message. So, excuse me. See you back soon.
Welcome back, brothers and sisters. Hope you enjoyed your breakout. And uh, I'd like to share with you all what uh, we talked about in our breakout by sharing with, uh, inviting up first, Mr. Elaine Renguez. Renguez. Talking about resurrection, this is a very valid and a big uh, concept, big uh, and substance. Jesus wanted to be blessed, be married. He asked, Father said he asked three times to his mother, Elizabeth, and he was denied because a specific lineage need to be that. The true resurrection, it comes from the blessing, means rebirth, resurrection. Eternal life comes from the blessing, not anything else. The big mistake in Christianity, for the said, uh, believing that Jesus died, bump that up, all of a sudden, three days later, he reappears and talks and visit people. Everybody has an eternal uh, spiritual body, therefore they can show up to anybody. It's not the point. The point is to have, for Jesus to become from the legitimation, he has to be to the True son, then he need absolutely a spouse. Since the fall happened to people, then only two people need to be resurrected. That's very important. The following, knowing that father absolutely needed and feel he must be married before he start his public mission. We talk about Jesus the Messiah. You can be the Messiah only if you are blessed. God created human being by pair. Therefore, the Messiah is a pair, is two people, one man, one woman, not just one man or just one woman. That's very important. For the lineage, the love, the life, and the truth come uh, from that. Then God can come and just figure out that it works on three generations. God will be eternal with us on three generations, not just mm. one or two. That's very important. Keep on. And from that point, we learned when Chopin was touring in 2006, they were touring with the grandchildren. And they were explaining in detail that. Please uh, uh, read back what Father said. Therefore, we have to be careful uh, uh, talking about the resurrection, what, uh, uh, what the real meaning of resurrection. After the blessing, 71, then uh, Father could come and it's important for America to understand that. It's because Father laid the foundation of Blessed Jesus and he could come to America in 1971, December 18. Then if he didn't do that, there will be a possibility for Christian to oppose Father. Therefore, that point is very important because the body yeah. of uh, Jesus, body of Jesus is yeah. linked with Christianity. If, mm. the, if uh, Jesus uh, was not blessed, then they will be against, the uh, Christian will be against. Very important about that. This is yeah. for that word. Please uh, read the, what he said already several years ago. Okay. I'm sorry. Uh, uh, okay, um, Ali, I'm sorry. I couldn't have, I catch what you are saying that I just only know that you are doing another morning devotion, but I, I cannot catch much, but <laughs> only some part. Anyway, Thank you so much, uh, you know, uh, Elaine, for your sharing. Yeah, thank you, Uncle Elaine. Yeah, I, forgive me. I know your accent is very thick, uh, French. Yeah, but you know, um, I think what I got from your sharing was that you know that as because your parents followed the principle that nothing can stop them, not prison, not you know being a, a you know coming from a different country to America. And even death cannot stop true parents because they follow the principle. And that helps all of us, reminds us that if we follow the principle. Oh, I see. People, now I understand you. Okay. <laughs> I see. Wow. At I least that's, that's, that's what I received. That um, is a very beautiful then. Wow. Thank you so much, you know, Arlene, for your sharing. Wow. Good. Thank you. Okay. Uh, to share next, let me invite up uh, Mrs. Elizabeth Rocha. Um, good morning, Dr. Young. Good morning, brothers and sisters. Um, morning. Yeah. I'm very grateful, especially um, for the education, Dr. Young, especially for the hard education that we have to share everybody. I was longing for the uh, 
heart relationships in in every uh, people relationship. So that that was my um, long in my heart. Mm -hmm. So today, yeah, uh, uh, he says that if we don't, if we if we are people who has vision and clear purpose centered on God, there is no time for invite us the environment. So um, yeah, I have, uh, when I have the um, clear vision uh, centered on God, I really focus and do my best, but uh, I have that time too when I got confused and yeah, I was kind of worried maybe when I start family about that. Um, uh, I don't know the the situations that we wanna have. So it was kind of unclear, but now thanks to Dr. Young, mm. us again the clear vision and purpose center on God. So again, I can um, mm. see the clearness. Wow. Thank you very much, Dr. Young. That's my- Wow, opinion. thank you so much, Elizabeth, for your really beautiful sharing. Come Samida, thank you. Thank you so much, Aunt Elizabeth. And uh, now, family, let's go into our reminders. Number one, invite someone to morning devotion. I think it's a great blessing for them, and then you can share with them. And number two, joyfully give from your heart. Uh, there's, I think, so much more blessing you can receive if uh, you know offer some kind of donation, some sacrifice. I think uh, I think heaven will really reward you. And uh, now for our uh, musical offering, let me invite up our, one of our favorites, Uncle and Aunt Otmar and Anne Marie Weinman. Good morning. I'm sorry, it's just me today. Oh, yeah, it's all right, <laughs> Otmar. All we, right. We had a, a very late night yesterday. We were talking to my son and. It was very good, but uh, my wife is not feeling so well this morning, so... All right. Mm. Just myself. It's a song about love. Perhaps Love by John Denver. Perhaps love is like a resting place, a shelter from the storm. It exists to give you comfort, it's there to give you warmth. And in those times of trouble, when you are most alone, the memory of love will bring you home. Perhaps love is like a window, perhaps an open door. It invites you to come closer, it wants to show you more And even if you lose yourself And don't know what to do The memory of love will see you through Love to some is like a cloud To some for strong as steel For some a way of living For some a way to and some say love is holding on, and some say letting go. And some say love is everything, some say they don't know. Perhaps love is like the ocean, full of conflict, full of pain. Like a fire when it's cold outside, thunder when it rains. If I should live forever and all my dreams come true, my memory of love will be of you. Love to some is like a cloud, but strong as strong as steel. For some way of living, for some way to feel, and some say love. Is holding on, and some say letting go, and some say love is everything, some say they don't know. Perhaps.
Perhaps love is like the ocean, full of conflict, full of pain. Like a fire when it's cold outside, thunder when it rains. If I should live forever and all my dreams come true, my memory of love will be of you. If I should live forever and all my dreams come true, my memory of love will be of you. Ah, to I love your song so much. Thank you, Thank on you. my way, man. Come, s a m i d a w a y t o n m a n i o Thank you so much, God, Mar. Yeah, we love is the best. You can't go wrong for sure. Uh, brothers and sisters, this um, happens to be my last day for this round of MCing, but uh, I not only get to announce the next MC. But also announced that we have a new member joining our MC mix. So I uh, get to, so brothers and sisters, we're going to welcome up from tomorrow. Miss Rebecca Kalix will be MCing for us at Morning Devotion. So uh, we're very happy to have her aboard. Please uh, give her your love and attention from tomorrow. And uh, with that, we thank you for joining us today, making this such a wonderful experience. Uh, have a great day today, and we will see you tomorrow. Hey, our Milhan Stephen, you really did great job and the leading family pledge and become MC. You are doing all kinds of things, everything. Thank you so oh. much, Milhan. Yes, thank you. And we do have a closing prayer. Forgive me, I somehow I got uh, sidetracked there. To close out the prayer, let me invite up uh, uh, <laughs> Spase Kase. Good morning, everybody. Thank you, Milan. Please join me in prayer. Our most beloved God, beloved true parents. Uh, we are so blessed to be here, Heavenly Parent, with uh, all our brothers and sisters to receive your wonderful message from Dr. Young, Heavenly Parent. As we're beginning this year, Heavenly Parent, 2022, it's such important, Heavenly Parent. We really unite with the vision of true mother, with the vision of true parents, Heavenly Parent. Especially as we look outside the world, Heavenly Parent, we see so much confusion, Heavenly Parent. So much suffering and pain to each, each family, Heavenly Parent. All of them are striving, Heavenly Parent, to achieve happiness in their family, yet they do not know how, Heavenly Parent. We're looking at our own country, Heavenly Parent, who is really uh, not functioning properly, Heavenly Parent. We see people confused, you know, trying to replace you with medicine and with government, Heavenly Parent. In reality, Heavenly Parent, we really should be uh, united with you. We pray, Heavenly Parent, really, for your guidance, as we really, Heavenly Parent, uh, want to bring happiness and joy to you, Heavenly Parent, by establishing true families. We pray, Heavenly Parent, you can read, read us as parents how to love our children, Heavenly Parent, how to create that four-position foundation. We really, Heavenly Parent, uh, are so grateful that you still have allowed Shumala to be here with us, Heavenly Parent. We pray for a long life and health, Heavenly Parent, and for all the unity among the true children. We pray, Heavenly Parent, for the new success coming in this year, Heavenly Parent, with all the think tanks, Heavenly Parent, and all the meetings can happen in Korea, Heavenly Parent, in person. And we pray, Heavenly Parent, that this great nation of America will be able to stand up, Heavenly Parent, and really fulfill its portion of responsibility and become a great inspiration, Heavenly Parent, just like our pilgrim uh, father, Heavenly Parent. Founding Fathers. We pray really, Heavenly Parent, and all of us, individual levels and family levels, Heavenly Parent, we'll be able to come together and really, Heavenly Parent, uh, contribute not only uh, to our tribal Heavenly Parent goals and missions, but also on a worldwide level. We are Heavenly Parent, surely, slowly but surely, Heavenly Parent, we have, will be able to really bring victory to you by returning over our families, our parents, our brothers, our sisters, our Uh, tribes in our nation, Heavenly Parent. Uh, we ask for your patience as we're trying to get our act together, Heavenly Parent. 
we're so grateful once again and uh, once again Heavenly Parent we ask you for your presence and guidance during this upcoming week and again we are so so grateful Heavenly Parent for watching over us we are truly indebted to you Heavenly Parent and really uh, are here to offer all we can Heavenly Parent with our heart and mind uh, to bring your world to full restoration Heavenly Parent and not postponing the progress of restoration further and further away like our ancestors. Thank you so, thank you so much, Heavenly Parent, for everything. And we offer this prayer in our names of our all brothers and sisters, and in our name, the Katze family, the Blessed Center family. Adieu. Adieu. Wow. Thank you so much, Spasia, for your really beautiful prayer. You are really praying from your heart. That is really beautiful, incredible. Thank you so much. Kathy and Spase and your children, beautiful two children, joining Morning Devotion together. Kamsahamida Four Position Foundation. <laughs> yes, thank you for your Four Position Foundation, Kase family. And uh, all right, brothers and sisters, you know, I love you so much. And uh, I just want you to have a great day and we'll, we'll see you tomorrow. God bless you. Okay, come Samida. Thank you, Miran. Thank you, everybody. Bye, Dr. Young. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.